Now that we've spent quite a bit of time looking at converting primitives to objects using autoboxing, let's look at the opposite, converting objects to primitives. In the first example here is the same example that we used in the first slide of creating an integer object called object, and inside of it is 42 wrapped inside of the integer class. On the next line, what we do then is we create an int primitive called primitive int, and we take object, call the method int value on it, which is going to take that object and unwrap it, leaving the primitive 42 to be stored inside of primitive int, moving from integer to int, object to primitive. So let's see if there is another way that we can accomplish this in example two. So we create an integer object called object2, we wrap 42 inside of it, and then on the second line we have primitive int2, but instead of calling the method int value, we just have object2 there. Now is this going to unwrap it, or is it going to create an error? We really have those two choices, unwrapping or error. And you might think it would cause an error, because on one side we have a primitive, on the other side we have an object, but we're going to see that it is going to unwrap it. And you probably guessed that from seeing autoboxing, and now what you're seeing is called unboxing. Because the compiler behind the scenes is going to call the method int value. It's going to automatically unwrap it. And again, this is called unboxing. In the third example, which is kind of a crazy example, because it just doesn't look right. On the one side you have a primitive, on the other side you're saying do integer 42. So we're creating the object on the right side, but we have a primitive on the left side. Is this going to cause an error, or is it going to unbox it? Well, it's going to unbox it, because as you've probably guessed, the compiler is going to go behind there, find the integer value, and allow it to store it in primitive int 3. So unboxing is moving from an object to a primitive, and it happens automatically in almost every single case. So now that we have a pretty good idea about what autoboxing is and what unboxing is, let's look at some examples. In Boxing 106, in the first example, I start with a double object called dobj, which is assigned to a double primitive, 6.02. And so this is going to be our first example of autoboxing because 6.02 is going to be automatically wrapped as a double object and stored in dobj. Now on the next line, I've done something interesting. I have a double primitive dprim, and it's going to equal dobj plus 10. Well, something that you probably don't know about a double object is that it cannot be added to 10. The plus operator does not work on objects. So guess what has to happen in order for 10 to be added to dobj? It has to unbox that dobj, which it will do automatically. It's going to unwrap dobj and find the primitive 6.02 inside, and then add it to 10. And that is unboxing. And once that's done, we're going to get that value stored inside of dprim, which is then going to output and be 16.02. Another example of this, using integers, I have iobj, which is assigned as 67. Guess what's happening here? We have a primitive on one side, object on the other. It's going to be autoboxing. 67 is going to be autoboxed as an integer object. And then on the next line, what we're going to do is we're going to call the method odd or even. And it's just going to determine whether the number is odd or even using simple modulus division. So if it modulously divides evenly into two, we'll return even, otherwise we'll return odd. But what I want you to notice is that iobj is an integer object. What is odd or even expecting? It's expecting primitive. So you guessed it what's going to happen is unboxing. Odd or even is going to, behind the scenes, call the method int value on iobj, and iobj is going to be unwrapped, and the primitive 67 is going to be passed to odd or even. And this, of course, is unboxing. And then we'll get the result, which says 67 is odd.
Let's look at one more example of auto boxing and unboxing in example three. What we've done is we created an integer array list called numList and we've stored two values inside of there, five and 10. And this is going to be an example of auto boxing because five and 10 are primitives, but the array list needs to store them as integers. So it's going to box those two as integer objects and store them inside the array list. And then on the next line, it looks pretty unassuming. What it's going to do is it's going to find the sum of the two values inside the array list. But what you might miss is that when numList.get0 and numList.get1 are called, what they are pulling are not primitive ints. They are integer objects. And integer objects cannot be added together. The plus operator does not work on integer objects. They must be converted into ints. But luckily, our good friend unboxing is there for us. What the compiler is going to do is it's going to unbox the two values, then add them together, and assign them into sum. And hopefully you can see how great unboxing is. So we don't even have to think about the conversion between a primitive and an object. It just happens behind the scenes. And we don't have to make those calls every single time we use an array list or every time we need to make a conversion between a primitive and an object. So then we want to print out the sum and we would get 15 just as we would expect. So just like there are two methods of auto boxing, there are two methods of unboxing. The first one is assignment. And on the last line there is the assignment when we say int int prim equals numList.get0. Get0 is an integer object. It needs to be converted, and it will automatically do that and unwrap it, store 42 as a primitive inside of int prim. So we see first method of unboxing, assignment. The second method of unboxing is as a parameter. And we saw this when we were calling the method even or odd because we are passing an integer object, but the method requires a primitive. Java's okay with this, will automatically unbox it for us. And so the second method of unboxing is passing as a parameter. Two methods of unboxing, assignment and passing as a parameter. So let's sum up this auto boxing and unboxing mystery. Auto boxing is importantly the automatic conversion between primitive types and their corresponding wrapper classes. Primitive object, int to integer, lowercase d double into uppercase d double. Unboxing, automatic conversion between object wrapper classes and their corresponding primitive. So object to primitive, integer to int, double to lowercase double. What are the methods of autoboxing? The first one is assignment, assigning a variable of the corresponding wrapper class. The second, passing as a parameter. What are the two methods of unboxing? Assignment is the first, assigning to a variable the corresponding primitive type. And then the second method is passed as a parameter of a method, taking in as an object, but the method requires an int. No problem, Java has it handled. Autoboxing and unboxing is such a powerful tool in Java. It is important that a programmer understands that it's happening, and it's also important to appreciate all of the times behind the scenes the compiler is working tirelessly to change and transfer a primitive into an object and an object into a primitive. Autoboxing and unboxing is probably one of the most time-saving tools Java has ever created. But just because it's automatically doing it for us does not mean that we do not need to understand what's going on. A programmer needs to understand that a conversion is taking place, whether from primitive to object or object to primitive. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you like the video, please do click like below. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, please do subscribe to the channel. Truly, thanks again for watching.